Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm LinaCPLG, this time with another free-to-play video review. Another PvP this time. Now, this is a dedicated free-to-play channel, but of course I cannot play all the games all the time, but I recently, given the circumstances, uh, you know, with the pandemic of staying at home for long periods of time. So I decided to try a bunch of different free-to-play games and, you know, do a little review on them because, you know, I think the devs like the feedback and I got nothing better to do. <laughs> also, I've been trying to get into streaming and, um, of course, PvE games don't really seem to attract a lot of viewers, so I tried a couple of PvP titles and this was one of those. So, today I'm going to be talking to you about Spellbreaker. Spellbreaker, as I said, is a PvP game that's a similar mechanic to Fortnite, but it follows an anime an 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 aesthetic, which I think is very cool. So let's talk about that first. At the beginning, you get to choose between eight characters, eight different characters of different genres and ethnicities. Uh, it's a bit limited, but okay. The problem is, you don't get to customize any of it. Now in Fortnite, you can al can't also customize anything, but you are given a random character. So it makes sense. It's a random character. You don't get to do anything. You just get to play with it. Here, because I could choose the starter character for say. I thought I could at least, you know, tailor it to my taste, even if it was changing, just changing some colors like uh, the outfit or the hair or something like that. But no, it's a pure placeholder until you get uh, some skin or some new skin, which I'll talk more ahead. Then there's the battle stage. It's pretty big, which is good and a bad thing. The stage only has two distinctive areas, there's a desert and there's mountains, you know, there's a little bit of forest and trees there, but it's basically just these two. Um, then there's the structures, and you find every structure structure very similar to one another, they're all just ruins. You know, some are bigger, some are far smaller, but there is no distinctive trait about them to, you know, to have an easy identification or to communicate with other, with other players, you know, it's like, like Oh, there we're fighting at the, the Crystal Palace. There's no Crystal Palace. Or we're fighting at the, at the um, Egyptian tomb. There's no Egyptian tomb. You know, there's nothing relatable on the set. It's just mountains, and so you know, it gets a little bit tricky. Um, but yeah, it looks good, but it is very limited. It's not like Kenshin Impact, that's for sure. Now the gameplay and the, and the fights. Now, I really like the premise of these battles. Basically, you are a sorcerer or a magician, something like that, and you will have two gloves with magic powers. Now, each glove has a particular, a particular element uh, of effect that you can combine with the effect of the other glove to create a more powerful attack, and you can only carry two gloves. You cannot carry two gloves of the same. For instance, if you have a glove of fire, you cannot uh, carry another glove of fire. You have to have different gloves. Um, the gloves have, have their own power level, uh, same as Fortnite, you know, uh, the, when they drop from resource cache or something like that, the whites and the greens are the lower ones and the golden ones are the, the, the higher ones, the more powerful ones. So that is kind of, you know, balanced. But you also have element power level and the higher those are, the better, uh, better your abilities and the stats. You can lock stats for the gloves themselves, I think. You also have a special, but this consists mostly of a maneuver that you can, and not a proper attack. So, to use it, you you can use it more to do ambush ambushes or to flee the enemy than to engage the enemy in different ways. All this is really cool, and I believe this is what attracts a lot of players. You know, once you you decide to use, I mean, I'm going to use fire, so you start using fire more, and you build up the your power level with fire. And once that's at a good level, then you choose maybe um, Toxic. And because you can combine the, the two gloves, once you have two of the, uh, the gloves at high levels, you know, you, you can pretty much one-shot practically anything, uh, unless the enemy also uh, the enemy or uh, your opponent also has those things um, really high, then it, it matches up. I think matchmaking is good at the game, because I was only always matchmaking with people like, you know, had the starter suit, so I think they're all like that. This was well developed, that's what I'm saying. However, the combat gameplay is quite... I'm gonna say chaotic, not say bad. 
Because your powers take so much space on screen, you can hardly see anything when you start firing. Uh, if you use most of your uh, of your most powerful abilities that linger on stage, you know, they burn or they have this cloud of gas for a while, uh, it, this can fill up the screen so much with so much stuff, it becomes hard to keep track of your enemies or even your own abilities. You don't know what ability damages you or, sp or not, uh, especially if you're playing with a team with def different people doing different things. Then, you know, that's where it gets even more problematic. To make matters worse, there are only two game modes. There's the Battle Royale, you know, the standard that you see in Fortnite, and there's Team Battle, which has, I think, nine players on each side. Now, the Battle Royale has a problem, like I said before, because of the size of the stage. When you spawn or when you respawn, you have quite literally to walk for a couple of minutes before you find anyone to fight, which isn't something new, but it can be a deterrent if you walk for a while and then get one shot and then, you know, can't do anything again and have to start over again. The Like Fortnite it has, it has this ring that constrains your movement after a while, but I think it takes either too long or maybe the it doesn't have enough players in the set or something because you know you do, you're not really feeling that you are in battle most of the time. Most of the time, I just walked around exploring stuff and I wasn't even fighting. After a while, yes, I started respawn right in the middle of the battle, and that's where you know all the chaos broke out. So in that sense. Team battle is better, but like I said before, when you have 18 players all throwing attacks in a small area at the same time, everything is just chaos. Sure, it can be a lot of fun, you know, being in the middle of all those explosions and all that, but if you are battling for a particular purpose or of objective, you know, objectivity goes right out the window. You're just spamming your specials and spamming your attacks and hoping that you will hit anything. So. What everyone ends up doing is just jumping a lot and hovering around because that's the way, o only way you can see the battlefield and trying to identify which are our friends and which are your enemies. But of course, you end up doing this all the time, something that you know gets boring after you know the first two or three battles, in, in my opinion. Also, the terrain is very rocky, which makes it difficult to maneuver. Um, I can tell you the amount of times that I got you know cornered or in a valley or in a and some trees and such and end up dying because you know I just couldn't get away I just couldn't jump I couldn't or if I could jump I couldn't see very far so I end up getting killed that said I do like the third person shooter aspect of it I like to see my character when it's you know doing this stuff not exactly because I uh, in this case it's not really uh, uh, useful because you can't customize it you know you're looking at a character that looks like everybody else but you know, I do like the third person. I do like to see my character once I'm shooting. I like that that in games. But I believe that a change of the camera view may be an option to do it. You know, maybe to widen up the area or have a more, more bird's eye view, so to speak. And of course, more mobility to the character instead of just moving up and down. You could have like sideways, side steps or something like that. Uh, would go a long way in fixing all the issues that I've just stated in my problems with battles. Then there's the rewards, which aren't great. Like I said, most of the rewards are trails. There's some other minor stuff, but you know, the visual aspect of it is just trails. And then you have good hoods that you can get. That again, I thought it could be cool if I could put some customization on it, even if it was changing colors. But you know, these are just skins that you put over the entire character. And I th was like, man, I wanted to keep my character being the one that it was, but with a hood, and maybe change the color of the hood or something like that. Um, there is a cool knight skin at the end, but I don't think it. I really want to walk around with a knight armor that looks like everybody else. Like I said, going back to the battle, I'd like third person, but if my character looks exactly like every other character, uh, why the hell am I? I don't need to be looking at it, because it looks like everything else. So, yeah, I think the could have made things different here. So all in all, I'll just say this. It is a good game. It is. It is a good game. It is right now the PvP I spend more time playing, other than Fortnite. And I play that because of my nephew. <laughs> and I like quite a lot of trophy if that, you know, means anything or if it counts for anything for anybody. 
Also, I was amazed to see that this has a big, a really big player base in my country, in Brazil and in Japan. So, you know, the developers are doing something right. However, the battle is quite confusing at times and there is little to explore in terms of, you know, diversifying the gameplay um, between the locations, uh, depending on or depending on in, on where you are, and of course, there isn't really anything cool to fight for as a reward. You know, there's not new colors, new hairstyles, new you know painters that you can put on your um, hood or uh, different hoods for different people or changing the colors for different hoods of the, for different people. You know. So, yeah, I think that with some minor tweaks and some more investment in the season pass in the reward pass this could be a really this could really elevate the game uh, and help it thrive against you know other pvps like apex and something like that but as is and although i did enjoy some parts of it i wouldn't play this in the, in the long run no i wouldn't of course this is just my opinion and everyone is welcome to try it and you know judge for yourself i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please like and subscribe and as always have a great game guys